Hi, my name is Ciro and welcome to the introduction for Blackbox. Blackbox is a package for Unity that allows for new, improved prefab workflows. It allows to hide properties and child objects while we work on prefabs in the scene in order to avoid unwanted overrides. In this video, I'm going to show you very quickly how to set it up and what are the main advantages. Blackbox comes as a package, so once you install, you will find it naturally here in the packages. Uh, obviously, it will appear also in the package manager window. Uh, it should appear here. Because it's a local package, you won't be able to update it. Once it's installed, you can now start working with it by applying the component to your prefabs. Blackbox is very useful in situations like this, where, for example, we're doing some level design and I have some prefabs that are very complex and I want to use in the scene, but I don't want to see their complexity in the scene. So for instance, if I go and take this dummy prefab and I bring it to the scene, you will notice that the prefab is made up of several game objects, which of course, by default, appear here in the hierarchy and I can select them. This is fine, but uh, sometimes this can lead to mistakes. For instance, if I want to add a component to this prefab, like this script called oscillator, which allows the prefab to oscillate, I might mistakenly add it to the scene and now the component has been added as an override. You can see it because of this blue line here and the, the bold uh, font. And this is intended sometimes, but the thing is that if you do it by mistake, next time you use this prefab, um, the new copy, of course, will not have the component, uh, so it won't move. So the reality is that what we wanted here is we would have wanted to go inside prefab mode and add the component here, uh, but we did it outside. So with black box, you can avoid these small errors. The way it works is like this. Let's remove the component to start fresh. You first go into your prefab and you add the black box component. Once you do that and saving the prefab, you will of course notice that something has changed. The prefab is now, uh, we say, locked. So the black box component is hiding its complexity in the scene, which means that if you, even if you bring another one, uh, it's going to happen the same to, to all the instances of this particular prefab. Um, so the complexity, like the child objects and the components and properties of the root have been hidden in the scene view. But if you go into prefab mode, uh, you will, of course, see and be able to see them all like normal. I like to usually bring this to the top. I will also want to point out that this prefab in particular is a prefab model. I mean, sorry, the prefab is a variant, but the one contained inside is a prefab model. So you will notice that many of these uh, things are um, added as overrides inside the prefab, but in the scene, uh, they're, just, uh, they're just not visible. Now that the black box component has been added, you can see here, you can actually uh, unlock it. So you can temporarily make sure that these things actually show if that's, that is your desire. Um, but normally I want to leave it locked. And this property, maybe I'm going to explain later. But the important thing now is that in the scene, this prefab can now be used. And of course you can override like rotation, position and scaling as normal and uh, turning it on and off but you won't be able to override the child objects, so you won't be able to make mistakes. Now we can actually add the oscillator component in here, and when we go back to the scene, we don't see it because it's in the prefab, and we won't be able to create uh, overrides to it from the point of view of the scene. Now, the interesting thing is, for example, this oscillator component, we have amplitude and speed, and maybe sometimes we do want to make one instance go faster than another. So we want, for example, this property speed to be exposed on the uh, prefab root and be able to tweak it from here. So that, if, for instance, if I have two of these dummy characters, uh, I will be able to control their speed independently. Well, Blackbox allows you to do so. If you go inside the prefab, uh, you can actually, from the interface of the Blackbox component, add properties and reveal them on the prefab root. So if you click this button here, it shows all of the child objects of the prefab um, with their names, of course. And then as you expand these drop downs, you will see their components. So for instance, here I have the oscillator component and you can see the properties that I was looking at before, which are here at the bottom. I can now expose them. Let's say I want to expose just speed. 
and you actually can rename the property here as well so it appears as different uh, but I don't want to do that so now I can just go back to my scene and you see that the um, speed property of the oscillator component has been exposed so now I can actually uh, create an override but this is my you know uh, this is my intentional um, modification that I'm doing so now I actually have one override which sits on the speed property for this particular instance and you will notice that this particular instance now moves faster um, because these properties are exposed referencing the original one it means that this speed variable is not on the black box component but is actually referencing the one on the oscillator component so you will notice that if I select this prefab and I click on the override drop down Unity tells me that the override is not on black box but is on oscillator as I would expect the nice thing about black box is that it doesn't duplicate the data but it just references it which means that if you have a script that relies on this property to be of a certain value your script is still gonna work and no modification will need to be done to your to your game code to you know find the variable somewhere else because the variable with its value is still there it means that I can also revert it from here like normal it means that I can right click and revert from here it means that I can actually right click and apply so if this goes to 5.56 you'll notice that the property has been applied to the oscillator script within the prefab we have all the power of the prefab workflow uh, just from a new interface and again no change in functionality this also means one more thing if I were to override this property and then for any reason remove the black box component as I go back to the scene, I will just see, of course, the whole structure of the, of the prefab, uh, also for the other instance, which has been freed, let's say, unlocked. Uh, but also, the override is still there, and it's with the value that I had. So you can see that black box is a non-destructive workflow, which allows you to add and remove the component at any given point in time, and you don't lose anything in your uh, changes on this prefab. So no work is lost. Obviously, the prefab has changed, but the, the data that sits on it doesn't need to be uh, tweaked or, uh, you know, restored in any way. Um, and in fact, I can actually go in here and if I add the black box component again, and if I were to expose that property, which is here, you will notice that the override is still there again, and it's still sitting on the correct property. And as I uh, show the override dro overrides drop down the oscillator pro uh, component is the one being overridden and this is pretty much the workflow but uh, I want to show you one more thing which is I think is quite nice because sometimes objects can have deep hierarchies and sometimes it's a bit uh, unwieldy to go and um, expose let me drag it again at the top expose properties from here uh, because you might you know get lost uh, and also it makes more sense to expose them in context so for instance if I go to this object here sounds and let's say this is a sound emitter that allows this character to talk and we want to make sure that each instance has its own voice while preserving all of the other properties like the volume or you know all these 3d uh, sound settings of this audio source so we don't want to expose them but we just want to expose for example the audio clip uh, or let's say the volume, right? We can actually expose and reveal properties from here. We can right click and click reveal on black box. And by doing so, if you go to the root, you will notice that now the uh, black box script has not only the speed that we exposed before, but we can um, see that uh, two properties have been exposed from the sounds object, uh, which sits of course on this game object here. And now we can rename them so we can say for example uh, voice clip and we can call this one this one is volume so I don't know voice volume and when we go back to the root we can now see that the properties have been exposed um, and we can now uh, override them and give them like different values per object so we can select this other one here and we can give it another audio of course I have given the same but I didn't have another one 
uh, but you can now customize the behavior of these two prefabs independently only on the properties that have been exposed by the designer or by the programmer. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of like the workflow. The next thing to mention maybe is that if all of this workflow doesn't work for you or for some reason you just want to uh, disable it temporarily, of course one option as I mentioned is to remove the, the component uh, altogether. Uh, another option is to temporarily unlock a single prefab. But if you're having any kind of problem, if you're having some kind of like uh, performance issues or whatever, uh, you can actually go into the Unity project settings, black box, and here you can actually make sure that the locking is disabled. So if I do this, you can see that the object has been, have been unlocked, even though they, they were locked. So it's kind of like a global toggle and the component clearly tells you that, even if you go inside, it will tell you that. But if you re-enable locking and then you go out, then the prefabs are locked again. So this is a temporarily, temporary um, global setting. And the other thing is that you can make sure that the black box component is added automatically to new prefabs or to new prefab variants. Uh, so for instance, if I were to like take an object, and transform it into a prefab, you will notice that the object has been added the black box component uh, straight away, which I obviously always like to add at the top. But now this object is locked, this prefab is locked, and I can actually start adding children. I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm adding here, just to show you that the prefab is actually locked even though it has all of the children still there and again because this um, workflow as i said is non-destructive i can always remove the component at the second time uh, and the prefab gets unlocked the component will not be added automatically again uh, even though this uh, setting is on because this one means that it will only be added automatically to new prefabs so as soon as you create a new prefab and never again um, and that's uh, pretty much it. This is, I hope, a very simple workflow. And I hope that it will make your prefab uh, experience a little bit better to avoid unwanted overrides. And you'll find the asset on the asset store. The link is in the description. More improvements will come, of course. Uh, but for now, this is all. Bye.